Okay, in order, we got one more segment to do with Isaiah, but I gotta go back to Psalm 90 to do it because in order to introduce Daniel, I have to kind of lead into it by showing you what Daniel's gonna play on. All right, and Paul's gonna play on what Daniel plays on, so that's why all this is important. You know, you, it's the Word of God. You would expect it to fit together, so I'm trying to show the fit. Okay, here in Psalm 90, I'm gonna do a brief review of the, the two time tracks that it runs on. Your first time track, okay, as we've gone through in kind of excruciating detail, here's the whole thing, all right, is a panorama of, you know, from Adam to eternity. That's the first time track that Moses is using. The eternity part is right here, if I can get this to work, right in here, Psalm 90 verses 1 through 4. That's the eternity part, all right? Of the eternity part, this is God's decree, and it's really important. We've sort of looked at that now in some detail. This is God's decree. Daniel is going to get a response from God in Daniel 9, 24 and 25 using the exact same number of syllables because God's playing on this part of Psalm 90 when he replies. See, th this is how you can know for sure what Daniel 9 means, okay? Paul is also going to be playing to the same number, so that's why it's important to know. This is God's decree proper, okay? And then 84 syllables is God's decree for the whole time period. See, this 84 is talking about, this is the famous verse that a year, a uh, thousand years is a day to the Lord. And then after this point, the, the day of the Lord becomes a sort of catchphrase, and Isaiah will be using it a lot. Because they're counting down to the millennium when the final 1,050 years is going to play. And that's what this verse 4 is addressing. Okay? There's more to it than that, but I've, I've got to just do one thing at a time. Okay? So we also saw that this 63 was a dateline that Moses is telling you, Hi, I'm writing 63 sevens after the flood. And I covered that already in previous videos. So the function of this whole thing first is to give you the psalm of all time, the schedule of time. The Jews kind of mucked it up now. They think, because it's the, you know, this is 350, they think that's seven fifties, seven sets of 50. So they think time is supposed to run 7,000 years. And if you go on the internet and start, you know, querying about 7,000 years in Judaism, that's what they'll tell you. And I showed you the map of that already, you know, at the beginning of each of these videos, where you have the three boxes of time, and the last two boxes, Messiah is supposed to own them. That's what Judaism says today, commonly. And that means that the 7,000th year is supposed to be this millennium part here, and that's what they're waiting for. The sad thing is, is that the calendar is what they're using to count to that 7,000 years. And so they're expecting at the end of 6,000 years that he's going to come, okay? But their calendar is wrong, all right? They're expecting him to come in about 300 years. But their calendar is over 300 years off. We're really in the 6117th year or something like that from Adam. They did their calendar wrong. The guy that invented the Seder Olam Rabbah, which is the name of their calendar, how they got it, a guy named Yoshi or something like that, he, he chopped out some of the years during which the Jews were under the Persians. So their calendar is completely wrong, and they even know that. Not only that, but they're using lunar years, and God forbade that in Exodus 12. You're only supposed to use solar years. 
and Dan, uh, David designed the priestly courses to be 24 in order to correspond to 24 hours in a day because it's a solar year and the, the priests had to relieve each other 2.6.25 hours later than the last relief and then they would all have equal time by the end of a solar year. The Jews don't realize that today because they're not doing their homework and of course we Christians are even stupider. Okay, I mean, you know, the Calvinists don't even realize that dispensationalism is a Jewish doctrine that comes from the Bible and it's, it's sourced right here in Psalm 90. This is, the, this is how come the Jews talk about it like they do. And the Calvinists are stupider than dog doo-doo. So are the Catholics on this subject. You know, preterism is just, you should throw it out. Anybody who's a preterist, he'll never grow up spiritually. Okay, and this is proof why. Alright, so Moses' first time track is all of history ensconced in 350 syllables, which consists of 70-year units to depict the entire 1050 because the t continuance of time depends on believers voting. So that's the first time track here. And we saw kind of in excruciating detail how, you know, right here at, at verses 5 through 8, that's the Adamic 70-year voting window and the testimony of believers and non-believers alike, you know, cut, representing two different points of view, but saying the same words, okay? That's the Adamic voting window, and I, I've gone through a lot of details in my Psalm 90 playlist and in my Past the Salt companion video, I show how this Adamic voting period played. I mean, I went through the calendar in Genius XLS, which you've seen a thousand times now and are very bored with it, okay? So that's the Adamic voting window right there in verses 5 through 8. All right. Then you got the next voting window, which was the Noahic voting window. It's also 70 syllables from Psalm 90, verses 9 through 11. Okay. Then finally, Moses' own voting window, and he's writing autobiographically here. And this is the one that Daniel and Paul are going to play off. And Isaiah does too. In um, this is the Moses' own voting window, which he actually voted during the voting period, just like Noah did during his own, um, the 70 years just prior to the Exodus. Okay? There were 76 years prior to the Exodus. And during that time, Moses was in the wilderness. He had voted to stop being Pharaoh, stop being the heir apparent, and the concubine's son um, from Tutmos II. Uh, became the replacing, the second Tutmos the third of history. There are two of them who are Tutmos the thirds. So Moses abdicated in favor of learning God better. And he went into the wilderness for 40 years. And that, that story is told in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. The story, of course, is also told in, you know, in um, uh, Genesis and uh, Deuteronomy and Exodus in various ways. Okay, so Moses' own voting window Okay, is here, and he's writing autobiographically, and the fact that he voted is the reason why we're living today. Okay, so the next voting window of history that he's warning about is the one that Daniel's going to be talking to, um, and Paul also. Um, Psalm 90, verses 16 and 17, which is about the voting window during which the temple had been built, but Jerusalem hadn't been finished. And well, it had been finished, but then it broke down again. It had been finished. It was attacked again, etc., 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 so Daniel's going to be specifically focusing on this. So that's why I have to remind you as to what this meant in Psalm 90. Dan all of Daniel's math and meter is going to be focusing on this part right here. Okay? Now that was the first time track in Psalm 90. Psalm 90 was also operating on another time track. The other time track was a straight chronology, okay, from... 1400 B.C. when Moses writes, which he tells you he did right here in verse 3, 63 sevens from the flood, I mean from the, uh, from the captivity, okay? He's writing 63 sevens from the captivity, excuse me, and he's writing, he's writing in the 1050th anniversary of the flood, all right? So 63 from the captivity, 63 sevens from the captivity, and he's also writing in the 1050th anniversary of the flood, all right, so that's 1400 BC. You can't mistake it if you know how, if you actually read the Bible and plot out what it tells you are the dates, and you don't use lunar years. Okay, then you can't even a brain out can do it, which obviously I did. 
All right, so that's what Moses is writing. So it's 1400 BC. Okay, there's 350 syllables here. So, duh, 1400 minus 350 is 1050 BC. Oh, okay. This is where Daniel's going to pick up his accounting. And he tells you that's where he picks it up. All right, so you're clear on that. We've got two time tracks. The first one is all time, with eternity being reserved up here, you know, where the last 1050 for eternity, the, what we call the millennium today, being reserved up here in the first four verses. And then the rest of them are tracking the past from Adam forward down to the yet future to Moses voting window for the 1050 um, the, in which Christ is going to come. And that voting window spanned from, and this is really important to know, from 467 BC to 397 BC. Okay? So that's the first track Moses uses, and then the second track is a straight 350 years from when he writes in uh, 1400 BC down to 1050 BC. You got that? Okay, so that covers Psalm 90. Now we have to go to. Now we have to go to Isaiah. Thank <laughs> you.